Well, Minnesota lawmakers wrapped up a 2020 legislative session Monday that was dominated by the COVID-19 pandemic. The coronavirus forced lawmakers to change the way they normally conduct legislative business. This week, we have reaction from both Democratic and Republican House members. Greg Grell interviewed DFL Representative Liz Olson of Duluth about what the legislature was able to accomplish before its close. Well, this legislative session really got disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. It came right as we were kind of getting into the heightened part of the session. And so the first big things we really did were the COVID-19 relief packages that we were able to put $400 million into a special fund to be used for COVID-19 relief and make sure our hospitals had what they needed, be able to take care of small businesses and child care providers um, and do some things we just really needed to do to address the urgency of the situation. Uh, but beyond that, we did pass some really great legislation into law this year, including the Tobacco 21 uh, legislation that passed just within the last few weeks here. We did a uh, drug, transparency, drug Transparency Act uh, around the high cost of drugs, uh, prescription drugs. We were able to do the Alex Smith Insulin Affordability Act, which also happened earlier this session. So we've had some big successes and obviously the the epidemic or the pandemic really took over and we did what we could so and we have more work to do we weren't able to get everything done and i think uh, people are very aware of that and so the hope is to go back for a special session and do some more and going into that a little bit more in depth what what do you think some of your disappointments were this session that that you weren't able to accomplish you were hoping to accomplish uh, when the session got started yeah, a big one, I think, no surprise to anyone, is the bonding bill, the capital in improvements, the infrastructure work. In Duluth, in particular, we had a hefty list of projects that needed to get done and that were in the House version of the bonding bill that we brought to the House floor. And so that was disappointing, to say the least, that we weren't able to get that across the finish line. That's projects in every corner of the state and every legislative district that are just at a place of crucial need. And so that was a big disappointment. We weren't able to get that done. And I, I think that's probably top of the list. There's a number of other things as well, but that's top of mind and top of list. Now, of course, uh, we're in an unprecedented situation with COVID-19 and the uh, different uh, orders and things that are happening in the state. Do you believe the governor's orders have been appropriate and necessary uh, due to what's happening uh, around the world? Yeah, I mean, the, the governor, we have one of the best departments of health in the nation. Uh, we have some, uh, Commissioner Jan Malcolm is just top notch. Our epidemiologists are top notch. As we know, we're Minnesota's a leader in healthcare in a lot of ways. So the governor has been really listening to the experts around the decisions he's making. Um, they're hard decisions, no doubt, for any governor to have to make, but he's using the science and the experts to make those decisions and has done that for the best of the people of Minnesota in our state to keep our numbers where they are to make sure we're not overcrowding ICUs and he's really doing what he needs to and I think has done a good job all in all I mean obviously there's pieces we may disagree with or what but I, as a whole I know he's done what he needed to do to protect the people of Minnesota and I really stand by the decisions he's been making and he's worked really collaboratively with the legislature when it's time for us to step in as well um, we were there till midnight passing legislation that he was signing into law so I mean we continue to have a functioning role within our government too as a legislative branch which is really important even though he was doing the executive orders we still had a, a big role in making and implementing a lot of the policy and funding as well what are you hearing from business owners and just constituents about the situation with the uh, with the orders and uh, what are what are they telling you yeah, I mean, I think there's in you hear kind of the gamut of things. There's what I would have called the the silent majority that, you know, are doing what they need to keeping their head down, following the guidelines. And as things get dialed back to more of a regular uh, functioning we're seeing more of the restrictions get lifted i'm hearing more and more from those constituents who are worried you know worried maybe about having to go back to work as a bartender 
worried about uh, what it means for more people to be out, people, you know, in nursing homes worried about their loved ones there. So I'm hearing a little bit more of that heightened anxiety from people that I hadn't heard from um, as, but as now start, things start to get dialed back. Um, I hear from business owners, you know, that want to do what's right and are really worried about surviving this, but are also wanting to make sure that they respect the health and well-being of their workers as they open up. So I think it's a real balancing act that people are trying to do. And all in all, I think our community understands that we're really tied together and that we need to act in the best interest of not just ourselves, but everybody in the community. What do you think the legislature could do to provide further assistance for some of these struggling businesses? I mean, we're hearing every day in the news, different businesses, especially restaurants, places like that, that maybe are not going to reopen. Uh, there's really a lot of pain right now in the business community. Absolutely. And I think what we saw with the Federal CARES Act and how some of that funding came in, unfortunately, did not come to small businesses like the ones in our community that we're hearing about. You know, it's greatly disappointing to hear that you know, how that first round of funding got allocated to businesses and really missed the people that are least ability, have the least ability to survive the crisis. Um, in the state, we were able to do some work around small business loans. There's more in the works. I sit on the Ways and Means Committee, and one of the last uh, meetings we had, I think it was the last meeting we had as a Ways and Means Committee, we processed a $50 million bill uh, that would have gone to small, like very small business relief for a lot of those that are, are least have the least ability to receive other types of funding and so we're trying um, you balance that with folks talking about the state of the economy and not wanting to spend any money heard that from my Republican colleagues but in order to provide relief to small businesses and others we do need to think about how we invest in that so I think there is a time and a place even in a crisis like this that we still have the ability to allocate funds like that 50 million dollars we're trying to get across the finish line in the house in the last days of session now, looking ahead, uh, it does look like there will be a special session of the legislature. You uh, mentioned that earlier. Uh, right now, we're talking about June 12th. Kind of give us an overview of what you think uh, that session will look like. Will it be a quick one or will it be quite a bit to deal with? Yeah, that's a great question. So really what it has to do with is the governor's uh, uh, special emergency powers would be expiring and would need us to come back and act. And so there's always a chance things could look different at that time and we don't have to come back. There's, it's not a budget year. So unlike a budget year where we, if we weren't able to get a budget done, we would have to come back or face a government shutdown. We don't have that this year. So there is no pressure in terms of what we need to accomplish in that front. It really hinges on the crisis, the executive orders, um, and the emergency authority that the governor has is why we would be going back. That said, in the event we're able to go back, which I'm hopeful we will, that's where we could also finish up some of the unfinished business like the bonding bill. Um, or some local government aid. We've been talking about perhaps a tax bill with some aid for our local governments as well. Um, so I think there's still more to do that could be done during that time, but nothing's a guarantee. Uh, but that is the chatter right now as we'd be looking at probably a June 12 session that maybe a day session, maybe a few days remains to be seen. All right, well, Representative Liz Olson, DFL Duluth, thank you so much for joining us and uh, good luck if that special session happens. Thank you so much, Greg.